If you have a Sony camera, then you need this lens. And trust me, all you Sony owners out there, this is the one video you don't wanna miss. Because today I'm gonna to show you an incredible lens that's gonna transform your photography. And it'll do it without breaking the bank. For all those who are new to the channel, my name's Phil Riley, and uh, this is Riley Photos. I've been a pro photographer for over 40 years. Throughout my career, I've had the chance to test countless lenses. And so I know firsthand just how challenging it can be to find a high quality lens at an affordable price. But what if I told you there was a lens out there that not only fits within a reasonable budget, but also delivers outstanding image quality? Yeah, you heard that right. Today we're talking about this, an affordable lens that performs way beyond its price tag. And uh, you're gonna wanna stick around to the end because I'll share some stunning example images that'll prove once and for all exactly why this is the lens that you need for your Sony camera. So stay tuned because you won't believe how good the photos can look from this incredibly cheap lens. Now I'm a Nikon user, so I'm never really gonna find out how good a lens made for Sony E-mount cameras is, am I? But then I had a brainwave. What I need is a, a, a Sony wielding friend, somebody who can put this lens through its paces and show me how good it is. And I know just the person. And welcome, Phil. <laughs> Hi. Phil, how are you doing? Hi. Phil's one of my oldest friends and is a uh, TV uh, cameraman. Cameraman, do we call Cameraman, them? yeah. 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 Uh, working uh, over the years for BBC, ITV, Sky and stuff. But now he just works for Riley Photos. <laughs> <laughs> but, now listen, you're a Sony user. How long have you been using Sonys? Uh, about six years now. I totally swapped over from Canon. Okay, so was Canon, now Sony. We're going to put this uh, fantastic Viltrox lens. Well, it was fantastic on my Nikon. I've had, I've got one for my Nikon. I know it's good for that, so I've got a pretty good idea that I think it's going to be good. But we're going to go to the uh, picturesque market town of Bridge North in Shropshire, put this lens through its paces, and what are we going to try it up against? A Sony version? A Sony version, yeah. Okay, so that's their, a 40 mil? Budget, budget 50. Oh, it's a 50. Okay, so so Sony for about the same price, which as this film's going out, was around about 150 quid or something like that. I think you can get them for like 130. Um, uh, Sony have got a 50 mil that will go against this. Uh, so um, we've got a 40 mil Viltrox. The Sony's slightly faster. 1.8. 1.8. So uh, same price. Are they going to perform in the same way? Let's have a look. So here we are out and about in sunny Bridge North. I'm looking for uh, good pictures with my new glasses. <laughs> Let's go around this corner and on the bridge with the River Severn majestically flowing beneath us, Phil immediately finds something to uh, put the lenses through their paces. And it's this iconic um, advert painted on the side of this building uh, in white paint, bright white paint, on a very sunny day. This is a good test for the lenses uh, to see how they get on. And these are the pictures. So there's the first picture from the Viltrox. We thought this would be a good one to start, see if there's any flaring going on, any light bouncing around in elements, but no, uh, that was a really, really bright wall and um, there's nothing amiss. Let's see how the, the Sony lens got on with that picture. And there you go. Uh, as you can see, it's not quite as wide as the Viltrox, uh, but other than that, can't see a lot of difference, can you? Uh, there's nothing standing out. There's no light uh, floating about in elements. So uh, let's move on to the next. I just use the Viltrox lens and the focus was fine, just banged. The Sony lens, it's hunting. It's in and out two or three times before I actually get the shot. Ah, now that's interesting. So Phil's saying that the Sony is hunting um, and qu hunting quite a lot before it can lock on. But the Viltrox is, is getting in there, bang, straight away. Really, really good usability. So here are the two pictures. The Viltrox on the uh, left 
a slightly wider lens giving us uh, a little bit more in the picture the uh, the sony is the 50 the nifty 50 is the much in quality i can't tell too much let's have a little pixel peep and in 600 percent the sony gets us a little bit closer the wheel truck's a little bit wider but i can't tell a big difference in that full sunlight shot can you mm, this is going to be a tough test okay so we've climbed up to the top of the hill and uh, we're looking down on the river seven now uh, after a, uh, a much needed breather and uh, let's have a look uh, Phil what's that looking like oh right not bad let's have a look at the images oh Ville trucks I like that oh yes I like that and I also like the verticals look at that there doesn't seem to be any barrel uh, on these edges here look at these verticals over here and on this side over here as well uh, that's pretty impressive for a, a lens of this kind of price bracket. Let's have a look at the Sony. Okay, as we know, it zoomed in a little bit more. Do you know what? I don't think that's quite as sharp. And I'm not quite as convinced by these verticals here. Um, it's not much, but I don't think it's as good as a Viltrox. 1-0 Viltrox. Okay, so off to the park we go, Phil and I, and trepid explorers to find Bridge North Castle, uh, which that's all that's left of it, thanks to Oliver Cromwell um, firing cannonballs at it from the other side of the river in the Civil War. But we have got some nice gardens, so let's uh, zoom in on some roses, English roses here, look. And I think the time is here to open them to the widest aperture. Let the Battle of Boca begin. And I would expect the Sony to have this with its extra wide aperture. But that Viltrox has done a great job. Look at that. That's very sharp, isn't it? Great um, rendition um, from that. So let's let's see what the Sony can do with its extra aperture. Oh, well, there's not a lot in it, is there? There's not a lot in it between them. Not too much on picture quality. I think sometimes on pixel peeping... The Viltrox might have it, but on usability, well, that is a different matter. The focusing on the Sony now is getting really annoying. This is just spot on, it's just so quick. And the Sony is just hunting, and it's just getting really annoying. I can see what Phil means about the, uh, the hunting with this Sony lens. Uh, you know, I, I, you would think that there's not going to be a lot of difference between them. They're both the same price. Uh, they both look, you know, similar. Okay, the, the Sony's a little bit wider and it's got a little bit more magnification. But the the way they perform couldn't be any different. Uh, the, the Sony just hunts. It, it, it doesn't want to take anything for at least sort of one and a half, maybe two seconds. It's not happy. But you put the Viltrox on and boom! It's like you're using a much, much higher quality uh, uh, lens. It's of, I don't know, is it talking to the camera better? Is it just operating better or the mechanics better? What is it? I don't know. It's just better. I wonder if the pictures will be better too. There's the Sony lens. Let's get it on the camera film. And uh, as an idea, what we could do, if you get that on, if, it's, if we could balance it perhaps just on here, what you could do is uh, start the focusing and then we'll, uh, we'll go and get a cup of tea while we wait for it to focus. <laughs> that was actually Phil's joke. I stole it. <laughs> so as the historic Bridge North Cliff Railway sets off down the hill, we stay at the top and hunt out a cup of tea. We can put our feet up and recharge the batteries while we wait for the Sony to focus on something. So time for a little gallery of images now from the Viltrox. Look at that. You can't, can't be disappointed for 150 quid at that lens. That's amazing. Here's the uh, the castle. Uh, just about staying, well I won't say upright because it's not upright but it's still there. And the uh, that's nice and sharp. Let's have a look at the, the Sony from that one. No, I'm not convinced that's a better picture. In fact, I don't think it's as good. I think the Viltrox is better. I prefer that. I just think it's a little bit sharper. Let's put them side by side. Yeah, it's the Viltrox for me. Sorry, Sony. 
Here's another comparison. Phil Trucks on the left. Yeah, it's it's just got a little bit more bite for me. Um, I prefer it. Oh, no, this one in the old streets. This will be good for pixel peeping because we've got the text look on those signs. We can really zoom in and see what we think. There's the Sony image and here's the pixel peeping. Oh, yeah, it's Phil Trucks. There, definitely on that one. Here are a couple of uh, extra gallery pictures and I just can't help thinking what you get now for a £150 bargain uh, basement kind of kit lens is just astonishing. Look at that. It's just astounding how good they are. Um, 150 quid, I think 130 quid you can get these. There I've a uh, portrait of uh, yours truly. Hardly model looks, but hey, this is about dappled light. Try and um, uh, give it a bit of a difficulty getting through my thick glasses there. But uh, it's locked onto the eye on both the Viltrox and the Sony. Look, there's the Sony. They've both done uh, a fairly good job of that. As you know, this isn't a scientific test. I don't do lens charts and numbers. I just do usability. This is backlighting. Uh, there's no flare that I can see. Let's have a quick pixel peep. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Bigger. Oh, come on. Give it some welly. Let's have a look. Nothing in it, is there? I mean, there's not a great deal between. You couldn't slide a cigarette paper between these lenses. Uh, in image quality however usability i think that's a different matter it's viltrox all day long well what did you think we've had a look at those pictures we th we think that the viltrox is very slightly sharper yeah there was about three pictures that i couldn't really pick yeah one against the other yeah but the difference for me was the sony hunting for focus yeah i mean the we, the viltrox was just instant and the sony was like in and out a couple of times you know one and a half two seconds you could sort of miss a shot with that i mean when you've got them in the hands the uh the viltrox is smaller uh and, and it feels kind of sturdy. the quality for it feels it, better quality it feels a better quality lens definitely mm. um the results definitely you know i mean these are budget lenses they're only 150 quid you know in photography terms that is cheapest chips yeah yeah you know if you were getting what's the what's the sony quality lens it's uh the 50 it's probably 1500 two grand yeah 51.4 or 1.2 uh, yeah what's the range that uh, called what's the name of there's the, the g the g lens and the g master yeah you know if you're going for one of those you're talking thousands of pounds this is 150 quid this is loose change to photographers mm -hmm. and yet you know i don't think you can tell that on the results no i mean yeah no. i'm sure if we'd have put a g master lens against it we would have we would have you know seen well, yeah, the, the difference yeah but it's it, it's it's what do they call it the the law of diminishing returns you have to spend an awful lot more money for a for very a little small bit return. more. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I mean, you know, if you're getting started in photography, uh, or you're going somewhere and you're travelling and you don't want to to risk taking, you know, a very very expensive lens, these are good. Yeah. Excellent. I thought it was great. You know. So I mean, two camera, uh, two lenses. Sorry. Oh, by the way, we 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 use the same camera body on this. Yep. It, it was on. Yep. Uh, what have, what have we got it the on? The A9. But on the A9, uh, we literally just swapped and swapped out yeah. all the time. Um, you know, if there's any differences, we didn't use a tripod, so there might be a slight difference in composition because I stood, you know, an inch to one side and mm. you stood mm. an inch to the other side or something, you know. Um, but ultimately, it's the same lighting, same camera body, same position. And um, the Viltrox has got it slightly on pixel peeping sharpness, but really it's very very fine margins and what i would say is usability the viltrox is a hundred times better to use it's faster it, Fo the focusing is much faster it feels yeah it feels like it's going to do the job it locked on really really quickly whether we were giving it buildings people mm. eyes um you know whatever it just locked on the, the, the sony just it wasn't happy, it was, you know, it was searching. Yeah, uh, hunting around. You know, so um, 
that Viltrox is a stonkingly good value lens. Uh, you know, what you're getting is loads of lens for little lolly. You know, having to pay much for really something which is punching well above its weight. Mm. You want one? Love one. <laughs> yeah, you can have mine. You want to buy a Sony one? <laughs> <laughs> Sony lens for sale, everybody. You go in Viltrox? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Excellent. <laughs> hey, look, I hope you uh, enjoyed that. I hope it was useful to you. And uh, if you do want to buy one of those Viltrox lenses, I'll leave a link down in the description where you can buy it. Uh, full disclosure, uh, you know, I'm on Amazon. Uh, I do get a small commission which goes to help the channel, uh, but you don't have to buy it from that link. Uh, that's there for you to, uh, you know, to be easy for you, but you can just go into a camera shop and buy one if you prefer. But buy one, I would, because it really is very good. Very good.